Alright, you're with Al, and this is Chronicles of a Not Yet Champion Golfer. This is the first video I've been able to film during the whole lockdown situation we're in at the minute. So, just to start with, hope everyone's safe, healthy, doing what you can to stay that way. I know it's difficult with golf, we're a bit limited on what we can do. I've been in a few bowls in my net, taking a few divots out my garden, that sort of stuff. But this week it's going to be a what's in the bag. A few people have asked for it for a while. Now, I hadn't done it because I knew I was going to be getting a load of new stuff. So, I've actually got all that new stuff now, ready to go. Which includes a new hat and a new bag. It's got my name on it and that. A little Champions League badge. So that probably gives away what quite a lot of the new stuff is. So a little bit of a backstory to that. I spent a bit of time last summer at the British Masters. I went around with Paul, the Biff, who, if you've seen any of the videos, he uses Wilson. I'd seen a lot of his stuff and he just got a new set of the irons that they'd just come out with. He wasn't using them, but they looked special. And I was like, they're amazing. So I spent some time in the Wilson tour truck with Duncan from Wilson, who's a good mate of mine. They helped me out with some wedges at that point, which was brilliant. I actually got really excited and nearly took someone's wing mirror off. Oh, I've just wiped out a car with them. That's fine. Sorry. New wedges. Well. So I can spin it now. Duff proof. Duff proof. They've been really good. I actually changed my short game feel really confident with that stuff which is important for me and since then I've seen some of the new stuff they've come out with and really like the look of it. Been really lucky that they're able to help me out this year which is brilliant so thanks to Wilson. I have got some of the old stuff still in my bag but I've got a load of stuff still in the wrappers. Never hit a lot of the clubs so I'll be doing that unwrapping them as I'm showing them and I'm gonna hit a few shots with them as well but I need a decent setup here. I want it to be like professional and stuff and look proper so I've got a little idea to get me layout sorted. It's very high tech and advanced though. Come on. That's it, just spin it. Just a bit of a spinning action. Oh, what was that noise? That's fine. That's fine, that's fine. Not a problem that. I'll get onto the clubs in a bit, but what I've actually got in the bag to start. So, a couple of little bits that I carry around with me. Here's my Bushnell, it's from about 2005 I think. This bit's broke, so I have to hold that down when I get my yardage. So, like I've got, there's like a knack to it, so yeah, that's good. Um, still does the job though. This is probably the most important thing in my bag. Got a bouncy ball. It was in one of those like little machines where you put the 20p in, turn the thing. And I got this green one, and it's probably about 15 years ago, and I've just had it in my bag ever since. There's no other reason to it than that. It doesn't bring me luck or anything. And you never know, you might get a bit bored and want a little play about with your bouncy ball. Notebook. Just got some, obviously, notes in here. The 16th of the first, 20. So here's a lesson notes from then. Tuck hips under. Engage the abs. Move right hip back, but don't let left hip go forwards towards the ball. Oh yeah, don't let it go forward. Keep it, yeah, remember that. That's why I have this notebook to remind me of stuff. Left butt should not stick out. So that, it's hard because I have got a bit of a sticky out butt, but that's why, that's why I've got this to remind me of my lessons. So always write little bits down if ever I find stuff on the golf course. I'll write it down in here that I think, oh yeah, you need to remember that. Uh, and I've got a few like doodles of wildlife in there as well, obviously. A little liver bird stamp jobby. Stamp him on there. Little liver bird stamp. One thing about my bag, you know these look, the protective jobbies on the legs? Yeah, they'll stay on. Always have, always left them on. You'll see my other videos, my other bag's about three years old and that's still got the plastic on the legs. It's all like peeling off, but I don't know why that is. I've always done it. Jamie Guy, Paul's caddy, he's done a few videos with me. He's exactly the same. And we used to play a lot of amateur golf together and we both did it. And then for whatever reason, we've just stuck with it. People always comment saying, why have you still got that on? Because I want it. Highly professional, this, because I've got my tumble dryer, there's my table. And at the minute, I'm sat on a bucket. This is what I've been chipping to for the last few days as well. So the club's in my bag. Start with the driver. Sloth. He is like me mate on the golf course. Genuinely, because sometimes if I've hit a rubbish drive, 
and I don't want to think about hitting rubbish drives, but if I hit a rubbish drive and then I put my head cover on, he's there smiling at me and genuinely he makes me think, oh he's good, didn't he? Happy little sloth. And it takes my head away from the fact that I've just hit it into a bush or whatever it might be. So yeah, Nicky bought me him for Christmas, I think. And yeah, it just makes me a little bit happier. Want a bit of a bad shot. He's a three-toed sloth variety. There is a two-toed sloth as well. I don't know what the difference is. That is a ridiculous statement. Obviously the difference is one's got two toes and one's got three. Callaway Rogue Sub-Zero. Couple of generations old now this. I've used it for, this will be my third season coming up. So it's a tour edition head. The normal Sub-Zero has a weight in here, but this hasn't, this has got foam injected weight in the heel to speed up the toe. So it's very much draw bias. And I've got it set to, oh, can we get that? Nine degree, it's a nine degree head, standard lie, draw setting. It plays at 10 degrees of loft but it's got quite a low launch shaft in it. Tensai CK Series 60 Tor X Flex. For me, it's probably the best drive I've had for a long, well, it's the best drive I've ever, I've ever, best, what? For me, it's the best drive I've ever had because my bad shot is losing it right, so this is set up to not do that, but it's the only drive I've ever had that I feel like I can actually hit a draw with it when I want to, which, has been a rarity for me, but you know, that's change in technique as well. Improvements in technique has helped me with driving massively, but yeah, it's just something that I really trust in my bag, which hasn't been the case with driver for quite a while, to be fair. So yeah, I don't see it changing this year, but you never know, do you? So if something's better, then you'll use it, but yeah, I'd really be surprised if anything does take this out of my bag. It's got a skid mark on it. Then if you can see it on the camera, it's got a skid mark there. I was in Portugal and I swung it back and nailed a, like a bag stand thing and that's why it's got a big skid mark on it now so a little bit annoying. Three wood, old head cover this. People might not like it but look it's got like holes in it and stuff. Holes in it there, holes in it there. Just think it's got a bit of character. 2017 Taylor made M2 three wood. It's got um, roof marks on it, see here. You're not a proper player unless you've got roof marks on your three wood. 15 degree. It's a strong three wood, this. I reckon I can hit this probably like, I can hit 275-ish. It is a really strong three wood. Comes out, not much spin, quite flat. But it's, I say quite flat, it, it's good height on it. It goes quite high, but it doesn't climb. My issue with three woods in the past has been when you get it spinning up into wind and doesn't go anywhere near the distance you need it to. Whereas this is kind of high, but flat flight. So quite a penetrating high flight. I know that doesn't quite match up, but it's got a speeder, 757 evolution shaft in it. Tour spec X flex. When it comes to three woods, I've struggled in the past to have one that, it's like my little pet. I've struggled to have one that I've really trusted. I felt it probably got me into more trouble in the past than anything else. So I don't hardly ever use a three wood. I'd always go driver. And if it wasn't hitting driver, I'd be hitting an iron. Whereas now three wood's a genuine kind of go-to club. And I actually really enjoy it when I have a three wood shot, whether it's into a par five or off a tee. I just really like hitting this club. It doesn't have much shape. Difficult to shape it right to left or left to right, which sometimes can be a negative but i kind of got used to the fact that it doesn't shape very well it's very difficult to shape i think it's because it's got such low spin and it comes out with with very little left to right or right to left movement but i have sort of taken that as a strength because i know when i miss it it's only ever going to go straight right or straight left it's not really curving a lot not much curvature in the flight right or left so it just kind of gives me a little bit more confidence with it really we're into the new stuff, aren't we now? So all the irons now are Wilson. Funnily enough, right? I started off with Wilson when I first started playing golf. So one of my first ever clubs was a Wilson Blue Ridge forward, wooden persimmon head, steel shaft. And I remember I got hole in one with it. A hole in one with it when I was, hole in one with it when I was eight. So 
It's still somewhere, I've got it somewhere, I'll find that. I'd like to hit that again. Everything's still in the wrappers, look like even in the bag, wrappers. This is a staff model UT iron, so a utility iron. It's nervous, it's taking the wrappers off. Oh, there it is. Look at that, shininess of that. Oh, yes. So, 21 degree utility iron. So this is something that is probably going to be, for me, a go-to off the tee. So, kind of that one that you really need to find the fairway, but still get a good bit distance. That's what I'm going to go for. But, I've gone 21. I had an 18 in the old one I used to use in the old utility iron. But, I find such a gap between... The, the two iron essentially what the 18 degree was to my four iron and it's quite often where I needed a three iron so I thought go with the 21 these are stronger than normal irons anyway so they'll go a little further than a three iron but not quite the difference in the distance between the four and the two so it kind of fills that gap a little bit for me it's got a KBS hybrid X flex shaft in it I can't really tell you how it flies because I have never hit it literally you've just seen me take the wrapper off it so I'll hit a few shots with it in the net, but what you know, ball flight wise, I'll tell you what the first two yards are like, but after that I don't know. But I'm thoroughly looking forward to hitting this. One of the clubs I'm most excited about in my bag. Tour velvet, old school tour velvet, two layers of tape. Yeah, I'm very excited about that, to be honest. Little weight in the bottom, helps with the launch, because obviously these are normally lower lofted club so just gets it in the air a little bit looks like it'll go miles when it comes to the irons i'll just show you a couple because there's no point in going four five six seven it's showing you the lot because they all look the same i'll hit every one and talk through a couple of the shots but for now i'll just show you a couple of the irons show you the setup i've got and then we'll get into the wedges wilson staff model blades look at that Wrap her off. Oh my god. Oh, it's a joke that. That is a joke that. Look at that. That's ridiculous that. I mean that that's what I was talking about when I said when Paul got the the delivery of his irons. I'm not just saying it, they are like the best looking irons I've seen for so long. And I think that's a big thing. Let me just keep staring on it. I think that's a big thing. And when you get a new set of irons, you've got to be excited about them. You've got to put them down and think, wow, they look amazing. Obviously, the performance is really important, but you've got to have something that you, you like the look of in your bag. And I know that sounds a bit pretentious, but you've got to be excited to use the stuff that you've got. And I am excited to use these. So, obviously, staff model blade, bladed head right the way through, got the same iron right the way four to pitch and wedge. I didn't want to go combo because I've all, to be honest, I've always performed better when I've used blades. So some of the best performances were when I had a set of Maxfly Australian blades. I've still got them upstairs, actually. They are ridiculous set of irons then but they got a bit old and knackered. Um, and then I did go to cavities, felt like, oh, maybe I'll get a bit more help, but I just really like a blade. To be honest with you, ball striking has never really been a massive issue for me. It's always been one of my strengths, ball striking. Probably the direction it goes in is, is the bit that you need to work on, but that's why I, I just like the look of a blade and like the playability of a blade. I feel like I change my ball flight quite a lot, certainly playing different golf courses all the time different conditions i just like the workability of a bladed club really so that's why i've gone with these and they do they look unbelievable kbs tour 105 x flex shaft i've gone standard length standard lie standard loft and i'm going to do another video on that actually which should be quite interesting to see but kbs tour 105 and x flex now when we first you know, when, I, when we knew I was getting these clubs, I was going to go to the factory, Wilson factory in Scotland, do a full video on it, go through the full fitting process. But obviously with everything that's gone on at the moment with coronavirus, we couldn't do it. So 
we've gone with a setup that I know works for me and I haven't actually tested that this shaft in this head but when we get on the golf course that'll be more of the case that I'll look at and I'll make a video of that and have a look at the proper ball flight but this is what we've gone with because I know a little bit of a lighter shaft for me is kind of what I'm looking for. A bit of mid-launch flight, that's what I, I want. Mid, I don't like massive amounts of spin, so it'll be interesting to see how these do. But I like a lighter shaft just because I like to feel the head a little bit more. A lot of people tend to go a little bit heavier in the shaft, but for me, I kind of lose a little bit of a feel throughout the swing. And I like to, sounds a bit mad, but I really like to feel the head throughout the swing, certainly on the downswing. And I feel the work I'm doing trying to get transition at the top in a lighter shaft, I can feel the head a little bit more. So that's why I've gone 105. Everything now, tall velvet, two layers of tape, full cord. That's a joke, that iron. So I've got my eight iron now. This is the one that I use the most for practicing. So I'll talk you through a little bit of the detail on the head here. I love this, like old school through bore. I love that. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what effect that has on the performance of the club, but I just love that. I think it looks class. Couple of little details of these as well, because they're a modern blade, a modern looking blade, and they're not like tiny, they're not like this big, you know, they're, they're still quite a lot of club face there. You know, they're not massively short. In fact, these are longer, I think, in the club head itself than some of the cavity irons that Wilson makes, so it doesn't look like you're trying to play golf with a butter knife. But some of the little traditional touches on them, like the the little, um, can you see that on the camera? See the little etching on the hosel there. The little diamond bits down the sides of the face. Used to get on the old school clubs, just those little touches of a traditional blade but in such a uh, just awesome looking head that i'm so happy with these so that's the iron setup like i said four to pitching wedge because i filled that gap with that utility iron then into the wedges so i have normal pitching wedge which i believe is 46 in these irons into my 50 degree which is the new 50 degree staff model forged wedge lovely looking wedge I've, again through bore on them just love that same setup same shafts in the wedges as they are in my irons now this will be interesting to see when i get out and actually test them and see how they fly i've got to be honest with it being a light shaft in a wedge i'm not sure that they may climb a little bit and get too much of a high flight on it but it'll be interesting to see when I get out on the golf course just a lovely looking wedge quite a matte finish I've never used a forged wedge before um, most wedges aren't forged um, so it'll be interesting to see the difference in the feel in these compared to the PMP wedges that Wilson wedges that I was using before but they just yeah they look class love the matte finish on them and they've got Almost a difference in looking down at this in comparison to the old ones. Little bit more sort of curved on the bottom edge. It feels like that sits a little bit further forward. And they do look lovely. I mean, new clubs look amazing, don't they, when they're shiny and stuff. But that's these are the ones that I'll do the most practice with because I work on the wedges a lot. So I then go from 50 to 54. Again, through bore. Now, as they go up lofts, they put a little bit more weight into the top of the toe and that's just to keep the flight a little bit down so the center of gravity moves up the club weight at the top so the ball doesn't just shoot straight up obviously you've got more loft it kind of counteracts that a little bit obviously forge wedge again just really nice finish on them classic looking similar thing to the 50 i just feel like it's a little bit more curved at the front of the club kind of sits a little bit further forward it actually sits really nice it sits really nice. For me, with the wedges, how it sits behind the ball is absolutely crucial because I've been a little bit sensitive with me confidence with the wedges in the past and it's easily knocked and anything that can help that I think, yeah, that looks class. It's only gonna improve my confidence and I actually want it the shot with it. 54 degree, 11 bounce. So 
Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. 54, I use this more than a 58. This is what I use most around the greens. And I think it's almost been subconscious because a 54 is a little bit easier to use. It's got more bounce on it. Well, this one has 11 bounce. It's like a mid bounce really, but I just feel it's, yeah, I can get away with a little bit more than with a 54 than I can with a 58 really, but with a new one, maybe that's gonna be different. Right, I'd already taken the wrapper off the 58. Again, you can see this more weight set into the top of the toe. So just trying to keep that flight down a little bit. 58, 10 degrees of bounce, which is on the higher side for a 58 degree, which is good for me. That's why I've chose that so that I can get that little bit of forgiveness. And it's something I've tried to integrate into my pitching and my chipping more is making use of the bounce, but trying to be, a, it's crucial for me to have a wedge that's really versatile. So one that you can open up quite a bit and you can actually get a lot of variation in the sole, the way that you can play it. And what I particularly like about this is the way that you can actually, the way the grind is goes a bit thinner towards the toe, you can actually get the toe down and it still really sits in behind the ball well because I play that shot quite a lot. So yeah, that's the, that's the bag setup. I actually really want to hit them now, so yeah, I'm going to. Just another thing, just another thing to point out about the clubs and something I really like the detail from Wilson when they've built the clubs. They've got like recorded all the weights on them and everything. Each club comes, this was on the wrapper. So they test everything that's done for quality, which for me is a massive thing because I want to make sure the clubs are set up exactly how I want them. I get quite fussy like that. First shot ever with my new 58. Yeah, first, that's the first thing I noticed compared to the old one. It's just that leading edge. Just sits a little bit forward, a little bit more rounded on the bottom. But I like the look of that. I think that sits, it sits really nice. What you don't want to do with your first ever shot with a wedge is like curse it. I always think stupid stuff like this. I think if I like fat it with my first one, then I've cursed it forever. So there's actually quite a bit of pressure on the shot. Let's just play a little pitch shot, just make sure. Oh, beauty. It's funny that, it is definitely different to the old one. I've got the old one here. That's my old, the PMP, which isn't a forged wedge. I still love this wedge, feel like it's transformed my short game, really, but I don't know if you can tell the difference in the sound straight away. The forge one's a little bit duller. Just see if you can listen to the difference in the sound in these two shots. So that's the old one. Definitely a duller sound and it feels, definitely feels softer. I don't know if you can tell the difference there on camera by, by the sound, but to be honest, I'm not someone that always says like, oh, I can feel a massive difference there, you know, in like golf balls and stuff like that. Generally, I don't really tell that much difference and stuff, but that's the first time really that I've ever felt that much difference out of two wedges. I can't say whether it's a better thing or not because I can't see it before. I'm only seeing like two yards of ball flight in here, but first impressions is it's actually, it's really, really nice, which I've hit two good strikes with it, which, is obviously a good start and the club's not cursed. So, so far so good. 54. 50. Wedge. A little strike mark on the wedge. One shot will do. There's a little strike mark on the nine iron. One with that'll do. When I'm in the garage, I'll do most of my practice with eight iron. That's what I'll hit the most of, really, certainly when I'm working on technique. It's actually a joke how good that looks. Just, honestly, looks absolute. This is what I was talking about. When I seen Paul's irons, I was like, they're amazing. And they are so nice looking, just classically. Such a nice shape. Little bit more rounded than the Mizunos that I was using before. I love those irons as well, stunning iron, but yeah, a little bit more rounded in the shape. Certainly in the toe looks a lot more rounded, not as square at the top of the toe. And those 
just those little diamond cuts down the side of the face just add a little bit to it as you're looking down. They do feel good. They feel really good. In fact, the shafts feel great. It's a big thing for me is to know how the shaft feels. And when I say, like I said before, I'm not one that can tell a massive difference when it comes to that sort of stuff. As long as I can really feel the head throughout the swing. And what I mean by that, in transition, I need to make sure that's laying down. And the more I can feel the head, the more I can feel where it is, the more I can actually feel it laying down, which is important for me. So that's really what I'm looking for out of the shaft when I'm in here. When I get out on the course, that's where I want to look at ball flight. But yeah, that's beautiful. Good thing about this is, as well, off the mat, I mean, you clubs aren't getting muddy. Seven iron. Six iron. Five iron. The four iron, and this is one in particular I wanted to have a proper look at behind the ball. I haven't hit a bad one yet, to be fair. Don't say that. So, when it comes to the longer clubs in a blade, this is where a lot of people are like, oh, butter knife job, don't want to hit that. But actually the length of the head here is still, you know, behind the ball, it doesn't look tiny like some other blades do. It's still quite sort of confidence instilling. Of course it's thin on the bottom, it is a, a thin sole, but behind the ball, it doesn't look overly small. It looks really good, no offset, which I like. Again, I'm always looking for quite a neutral ball flight and that no offset just helps with that. Let's hit one with it. It's so good. I've got fingerprints on it though. Yeah, I fatted one. I fatted one. It wasn't the first one though, so it's not cursed. It's fine. It, it's only cursed if it's the first shot that you hit bad, so it's alright. I hit the first one good. I did fat that a bit though. There we go. Last one I'm going to hit. This is going to be difficult to see what it does because it's probably not going to get above the bottom of the net really with the space we've got and I'm not going to hit through with a driver because there's not enough room in here but last one. Oh it's a different noise isn't it out of that? Much different noise. Hollow head isn't it? I mean obviously it's quite chunky because it's a, it's a utility iron. Behind the ball looks like there's a tiny little bit more offset which you'd expect with this sort of iron but certainly not much. Still looks, definitely still looks like a player's iron. It's not like you're seeing a load of the back of the club which I don't like to see. You can just make it out as you look but it looks great again behind the ball. Yeah, feels great. I can't wait to hit that on the course. I really want to see what that flies like. So there are all my clubs, but I've forgotten my putter, haven't I? What an idiot. I've gone through the whole video. Oh, I'll show my putter now. Look at this, right. You've seen it, probably seen it before. I stole it off the Biff, right, ages ago. He's not asked for it back, even if he asks for it, he's not getting it back. Scotty Cameron, tour only, Newport 1.5, which is like the old Santa Fe shape. So good. And I genuinely, I don't just use it just because it looks like that good. But this is the best I've ever putted, really, since I've been using this. And yeah, I love it. And he's not going to get it back. Just a shame, innit, with the, the PW on there. Classic Scotty Cameron, thin grip on it. I really like to feel it. I wanted to get back to being a little bit more natural with my putting stroke. Thinner grip just made me feel a lot more natural and flowing within my stroke and I just kind of trust what I do and it's made a massive difference to me so yeah the Biff has lost this forever.
So that's it, isn't it? That's it, that's me what's in the bag, done. First impressions, obviously, like I said, it's difficult to tell when you've got a net that's two yards in front of you. First impressions on how the clubs feel, the setup, the shafts, how I can feel ahead. Really happy with it. I can't wait to do some work with these, but most of all, I can't wait to get on the course. More important issues at the moment. I hope everyone's staying safe, doing what they can with the golf. I'm trying to just hit balls in here, chip in the garden, do whatever we can, and fingers crossed we get on the course sooner rather than later. If there's any questions you've got for the upcoming videos, because I'm going to be running them, I'm trying to do a bit more content. If you've got any questions you'd like answering in those sort of videos, let me know. I'll try and get a few in at the end. Um, and other than that, you know the drill. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next Tuesday. But I'll probably see you before Tuesday. But I'll see you next Tuesday. Definitely see you next Tuesday. But I'll probably see you before as well. So, thanks.